burn pits. You've likely never heard of them, but they are used by the United States military to dispose of a range of items. And those in proximity to them are exposed to smoke and fumes, which could have adverse health implications. State Representative John Velas of the 4th Hamden District, an Army reservist who's been deployed twice in recent years, has proposed a law that would automatically enroll Massachusetts service members exposed to burn pits into an existing registry where their health can be tracked. We spoke in the studio. Burn pit, simply put, is just a common means of disposing of waste, all types of waste, anything you can think of. It's just service members throwing them in literally a big pit. Sometimes it's a big barrel and just burning them. Uh, batteries, plastics, all types of things so just to get rid of it. Hazardous really. material. And it's the exposure that we're concerned about. And then obviously in the airborne hazards part of it, just so some of the environments. When you were serving mm -hmm. overseas and you saw these, what did you think they were? Did you think anything of no it? No idea what they were. So when the base that I was stationed at, this FOB, in 2012 and 13, it was being transferred to the Afghans right at the time that I was leaving. So as part of that process, you're going through just really burning and destroying everything because you get to a point where you can't necessarily give everything to the Afghans. Classified materials, things like batteries you have to dispose of because batteries can be used in roadside bombs for insurgents. So you literally have to get rid of everything just for national security reasons and so classification. Kind of clearing the site. Clearing it all out. And when you were there, did you feel any? When I, the first time I was there, I had no, I, it was basically, this is going to sound awful, but it was just like I was sitting around with a bunch of my buddies around a fire pit. Oh, no wow. idea that those toxic fumes would have, would have any effect on me. But pushing that aside, I mean, the way that I look at this, this, this isn't about me. I have been over there. I have been exposed. My concern is that there's been so many service members exposed to these, both the burn pit part of it, as well as the airborne hazards, and they're just not registering the way they need to for when this comes to fruition. And to your point about a registry, there is currently a, a national registry yeah. the government runs where you can sign up if you've been, if you've served yeah. uh, since the 90s. There's six different uh, operations that yeah. you may have served in, may have been exposed to these things. So it already exists. What's different about what you're proposing? Well, the registry exists from 2014 till now. And the problem that we have is that less than 200 thousand service members out of about three million who are eligible have registered for it. In Massachusetts, of about 75 to 80,000 service members and veterans who are eligible, less than 2,000 have registered. So what my bill is all about is really catching the veterans where they are, really raising public awareness to get them to register in the federal VA. This isn't an anti-VA bill. This is about getting our Massachusetts service members because for reasons we could spend hours on, the Congress isn't doing anything about it. So the way I look at it is that Massachusetts needs to join the four other states States that are doing everything they can to get their veterans lined up for it. Things like the National Guard. When a service member comes back, Massachusetts National Guardsmen or women, when they come home, they're automatically registered as part of that medical process. You're proposing that that Propo would happen. Absolutely. That, sorry. Good point. Um, so that's part of the bill. The VSO, the Veteran Service Officers in Massachusetts, which theoretically should be the first place a veteran should go to see about benefits and just to talk about their experiences, they need to, every VSO in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts needs to be letting the service member know about this registry to get them registered. And the overarching concern, obviously, is that if you've got that many people who are not registered and who are already experiencing medical conditions, respiratory, cardiovascular, based on this exposure, when the VA finally does come out with this and say that there is absolutely a causal connection between exposure overseas and these illnesses, we need to have those service members registered so they can be taken care of. Because currently the VA says recent studies do not show evidence of long-term health problems associated with exposure to toxins released mm -hmm. in open burn pits. That's the VA's line right now. The VA's position is that they need more time to study it. And, and I hate saying this, but, you know, the Agent Orange situation as well. I mean, in my opinion, there are direct parallels to what this generation of veterans with exposure to burn pits and airborne hazards and our brothers and sisters in Vietnam who were exposed to Agent Orange. It took from Agent Orange was from about 1962 to about the mid-1970s. They weren't compensated in that medical connection, that evidence wasn't recognized till the 90s. Burn pits is to this generation of veterans, in my opinion, what Agent Orange was to Vietnam veterans. And I look at it this way. Why can't we just err on the side of our veterans? You know, when less than one half of one percent 
of this country is serving and protecting the 99 point whatever the rest of us, why can't we just say, you want to know what? We're going to err on the side of you as opposed to what our Vietnam veterans had to go through. So we can take care of this now, but in the meantime, until the federal government does that, we need to ensure that our Massachusetts veterans are getting registered for that so they'll be taken care of when that time comes. Military Times published a piece in July that said uh, there are some questions mm -hmm. about these being uh, areas of concern, possibly harmful. But at the same time, they're still being used. You yeah. were over there. You served. You yeah. were called up twice. Did do you have thoughts on alternatives that could be used? Because yeah. as you point out, security is a concern. Yeah. So I would be the first to say that this is a military necessity thing. You know, when you're in a combat zone, you just have to be able to dispose of certain things. So and well, those, why not gather it all up and ship it back to the U.S. or something like that? Just I, not practical. I, I would just uh, practicality. I mean, if you're in a combat zone and things are happening, uh, the, the reality of the situation is that yeah, in a perfect world, we could do that. And starting to do it, you're seeing them at less and less places. But the reality of places like Afghanistan and Iraq that are still, the operational tempo is still so high, you know, the way you properly dispose of waste is tough. So my position has nothing to do with the military. I get it. They have to do what they have to do to do that, to carry on the fight, which is why you're over there. My concern is that when our service members come back, you know, we take care of them. Elected officials are quick to send our service members to war. My position is that we need to take care of them when they get home. What about civilians who are over there being exposed yeah. to this? They don't get a chance to leave, or even government contractors. And full disclosure, yeah. my husband was a government contractor as a firefighter, but you have electricians, you have plumbers, you have lots of different folks who are over there. This would be for military personnel only? So this is, uh, well, thank you for your husband's service in doing that and everybody else that goes over there. Some of my best friends were contracts that contractors that were over there. The current setup, according to federal law, is that it's these conflicts and service members. Now, if I were the president, a congressman, and a United States senator, I would say that anybody who's ever been exposed to them should be part of this and taken care of. Since I filed this bill, I've had a lot of firefighters reach out who are contractors and others, and, and I feel their pain. And I wish that, again, going back to the U.S. Congress, that they would broaden this, broaden the eligibility. If you've been exposed, you should be taken care of. And a lot of times contractors would even have been ex-military. Uh, many of them. I, every contractor I know for the most part is. Not, I mean, there certainly are some that are not, uh, that are not, but oh, absolutely. And I don't think people realize how, how dangerous of a job it is for some of these contractors. I mean, in many respects, they're walking side by side with our service members and doing things that, for whatever reason, service members can't do over there. A lot of it just being we don't have the number of troops over there. I think I read in Mass Live that you were notified about the fact that this burn pit registry was a thing. You were given a flyer while you were deployed. You kind of tucked it into a pocket yeah. and forgot about it. Is that currently, are you aware that the only notification that service so, women so get? So I don't know. I, I didn't get anything the first time I was over there. The second time I knew because Kabul, Afghanistan is one of the most polluted cities in the world, if not number one. So this black smoke, the folks in Kabul, the residents would wake up and burn animal feces just to heat them. And then the smoke would go right down to where we are. So I knew, like my run time, everything. You couldn't breathe, really. It was hard. Um, so they handed me something really on the way out saying there is this registry, you should take care of it. But it wasn't until I got back stateside and kind of looked at it, was going through all my processing. I had to re-enter my reserve unit back here. So just that process of going through my paperwork, I was like, huh. And it was just so much more noticeable this second time over there because the smoke was just so. I knew when I was breathing it this second time that this is not good for, for, for me right now. So I took a look at it, and that kind of led me to ask a lot of my fellow veterans and service members, hey, are you registered? And some of the people, dear friends who, I, who are at the forefront in so many of our veterans' advocacy issues here, I didn't find one person who was registered. Hmm. So we Briefly, uh, next steps in this process. Push it through. Just, just, you know, one of the things that I found out that there's just a, when I said it to my dad, I was thinking of following a burn pits bill. He said, what the heck is that? The public at large do not know what burn pits are. Many service members do not know that they have been exposed. Public awareness, push it through, sitting down with leadership, letting them know why this is important, and then hopefully seeing this released in a very timely fashion.